Hey there, cash-strapped hipsters. You know, you should be happy you live in 2009. At any other point in history, if you wanted to drive cheap, you'd be driving an ill-handling, poorly-styled Econo box. But this is 2009, and this is the Nissan Cube. This is the Kia Soul. As you can tell, both the Cube and the Soul are distinctively styled. There's little doubt about that. But they're inexpensive, they get good fuel economy, and the nice thing is they're matching my outfit today. But we want to know which one's really better. I gotta go with the Nissan Cube. Of the two, I prefer it. It's distinctly styled. And don't say it's ripping off the Scion XB because the Nissan Cube was in the Japanese market well before the XB was a gleam in Scion's eye. I wasn't even gonna mention Scion, but I might mention Dr. Seuss. I mean, round windows? Look at the rear end on this thing. But certainly we have distinctive style from the Kia Soul. And at the same time, the tall aspect, I think, uh, presents an interior that's probably significantly better than the Nissan Cube. And Maybe we should take a look and prove that point to you. Knock it out of the park, Jack. Okay, here we go. Exterior style is what really brings you to these cars, but when you stop and think about it, you spend all your time in the interior, and that's where I think the soul really shines in comparison to the cube. Just look at this interior. Pretty rich. I'm not sure whether you're wild about this houndstooth check, but uh, you don't have to have that. There are other interior options as well. And when you compare this seat fabric and the way this thing is laid out to the Cube, I think there's no comparison. I mean, if there was an ugly fabrics Olympics, the Cube would be right on top as a gold medalist. When you look at the gauge package, this is clear and concise, easy to read. Again, with the Cube, it almost says Mattel to me and gimmicky. Easy to use the center stack. The controls are very easy to understand and use and uh, great cup holders right here where they should be instead of buried underneath. So overall, this is a real versatile interior that I think uh, looks adult enough to be uh, sophisticated and at the same time, it's also fun to use. So it's fun you want, Jack? Well, how about this? An interior inspired by a hot tub. I'm not joking, it really is inspired by a hot tub. Also, other cool detail, headliner and the speaker covers uh, they're supposed to look like a pond if you drop a pebble in the middle and the water ripples out. How, how zen. But it's, it's also, there's practical details. Look, there's a cup holder right here within like six inches of my left hand. And the gauges, you didn't like the gauges, but I think the gauges are perfectly legible. And they have a earth and a moon aesthetic, apparently. Designer talk. You know, Micah, you talked about the uh, speakers in the queue, but... I mean, they don't even compare with the coolness of the speakers here in the Soul. I mean, these things light up. You can set them for mood lighting. You can set them to flash to the music or just set them to be there. And my favorite, you can turn them off. If uh, looks aren't good enough for you, huge headspace and look. Ah, back seat, lots of leg room. This slides forward and back. Wee that is a flexible interior. It's not just good looks in the cube. You know, Mike, I hear you, and a lot of what you say even makes sense. But the measure of a car is really how it drives, and that's where I think the Kia Soul shines compared to the Nissan Cube. Longer wheelbase with the Soul, so it feels much better as you drive, and the steering much more precise than you could expect it to be. Jack, I'm really glad you enjoyed driving that Soul, but at some point, you're going to want to change lanes. And when you do, do you know what's on the other side of that pillar that's over your right shoulder? Me, in the Cube, I don't have that problem. When I look over my right shoulder, thanks to the asymmetrical rear design, I have windows so I can see that, oh, there's a Lincoln Navigator right there. That's pretty convenient. Sure, it's stylish, but it's also pretty safe. You know, Micah, you point out the rear visibility advantage of the Cube, and I have to give you that a little bit, but let's face it, cars have had rear pillars forever and ever. It doesn't seem to have affected safety very much, and I certainly feel that I can see to make a lane change in the sole as well. So maybe point one for the Cube, but it's not really a problem either. This is a vehicle that tracks much better. 
the steering is much more precise. With the Cube, you get the feeling that you're correcting pretty much every second or so as you drive the thing. Not very pleasant on the freeway at all. I won't try to argue the fact that the Soul is eh, the sportier of the two, but the Cube is perfectly reasonable transportation. The ride, I think, is superior on the freeway. It absorbs road imperfections pretty well, and it's got an engine that is zippy. If I were good, I would harmonize with the engine. It'll bring you up to speed fast enough to keep the 18-wheeler behind you from plowing over you. And for urban driving, I especially like the fact that it's got a truly excellent turning radius. Look at this tight turning radius right here. That's a really great turning radius. That comes in handy for all that city dwelling activity that you hipsters will no doubt partake in. There are a lot of similarities between these two vehicles as well. They both seat five pretty comfortably, actually. Safety is terrific in both vehicles. Six airbags in both. Uh, standard traction control, stability control available. You wouldn't expect that in, in vehicles this small. Fuel economy, very good, right around 30 miles per gallon highway in both of these cars. When it comes to optional engines, that's where the Soul has a bit of an advantage, because there is an optional engine. It's 122 horsepower uh, base engine in both, but in the Soul, in most models, you can move up immediately to 142 horsepower. I think the added 20 horsepower is a major, major advantage, especially when you're hauling around as many as five people and a lot of stuff. Jack, power is great, but it's really how you use the power that matters, isn't it? For example, you've got a four-speed automatic transmission in your Kia Soul, whereas in the Nissan Cube, you have modern transmissions. There's a six-speed manual, and then there's also a continuously variable transmission that helps maximize that 122 horsepower from the engine. I think that's pretty cool. Also adding to the coolness of the Nissan Cube, standard air conditioning and a standard auxiliary input so you can listen to your MP3 player. And on the SL and Chrome trims, you, know, you have to move up a little bit for this, but there's a USB input so you can control your iPod directly through the radio. Well, that's great, Micah, but uh, AC and auxiliary input are also standard in the Soul. Plus, this has a USB port so you can actually control your iPod right from the vehicle. That was educational. It really is, because a lot of the proof is in the driving, isn't it? And I think the Soul actually drives a lot better than the Cube. I might disagree, but there's a lot of reasons I guess people might be interested in the Soul. I think so, and uh, I can see people making a decision one way or the other, just simply based on style, but there's other things too. There's the driving enjoyment, there's the fact that this thing has a monster warranty, just a terrific warranty, and it is a little bit cheaper. I think the Cube is much more attractive, a more modern design, and I'd be willing to pay a little bit extra for that design. Plus, I think the interior is a little bit more flexible with the slide and recline second row seats, but, you know, different tastes. I can understand that and soul's my style. I guess I'm a soul man. As they say, there's room for honest disagreement and there is a seat for every butt. True enough, I'm going to put my butt in this seat.